Hey you! Yeah, you! Are you tired of people coming into your living room stealing your honey? Well, so am I. Well, do I have great news for you? Today we will make a security camera from scratch that will detect when someone is in the frame uh, using background subtraction. Background subtraction is an algorithm used for generating a foreground mask to detect when something is moving in the image. It is also sometimes referred to as foreground detection. This algorithm is primarily used for static cameras because you get a background model and you get the new frame, right? You'd compare that frame with the background model and see which pixels are different and by how much using a threshold. And that's how background subtraction works. So if you have a moving camera, this won't work too well because every frame is going to be different and it's going to be a lot different. Uh, so I think something is moving every frame. There are four types of background subtraction that at least I know about. Uh, MOG, MOG2, KNN, and then GMG. MOG and MOG2 both mean mixture of Gaussian. Mixture, MOG2, of course, is mixture of Gaussian, the second version. Mixture of Gaussian is a Gaussian mixture-based background foreground segmentation algorithm. Both MOG1 and MOG2 share a common characteristic where it compares the new frame with a background model. MLG1 and MLG2 defer. MLG1 had an option to choose how many mixtures of Gaussian you want to Gaussian distribution you want to allow. MLG2 is much faster than MLG1 and is also much more stable. It also gets rid of that uh, ability to choose how many mixtures of Gaussian you want to choose for the whole frame because it, it detects it by pixel by pixel and figures out how much how many mixtures does each pixel need. This provides better adaptability to each scene. GMG, on the other hand, is a lot more dynamic. It takes the first few frames, 120 by default, and compares them with the next ones, and it actually adapts over time. Now, MLG1 and MLG2 also had a history parameter that you could pass through each algorithm, where you can basically change what the background model is every few frames. So say if you want every 10 frames, the, the, that background model to be the new background model. So you do have an option to do it in something like that. And then KNN is one I haven't used actually, and I can't explain much on it, but it just means K nearest neighbors. And if you have any information on that, comment below. My personal favorite is MLG2, which you'll be seeing here today. So let's get to the code. Let's get type. So we'll create our main file. We'll call it main.py. And then to start, we're gonna import the OpenCV2 library for Python. We're gonna import NumPy. There's NP, um, and then now we want to capture, we want to get a video capture of our video. So I'm going to provide you all with a video demo, um, basically just coming into the screen, showing it. Uh, we can just show it here real quick. So this is the video, 20 second long video. Come on, come on. I made it a little longer so I, we can play around with some metrics and different things like that. I'll just show it. So there, I, there it is. Still in the honey. <laughs> All right. So I provide us with a video. So we're going to call this variable capture equals cv2 dot video capture. And the video is going to be called demo dot move. Um, all right, so next we want to create the background subtractor. So we'll call it fgbg it goes cv2 dot create background subtractor. And we're going to use mog2. So this has a few parameters. It has history, it has threshold, and detect shadows. So basically, what history is is how many previous frames previous frames are used for building the background model. So say if our history is ten. That means every 10 frames is going to build a new background model. So yes, yeah, so anything standing in that position. So if you've seen in the video, if I would have stood still in that, in that, air, that position, um, that would have been the new background. Uh, and then if I would have moved from that position, the background would change and it would be considered movement. Uh, so we want a pretty high history for 300 frames. And our second parameter is threshold. Threshold basically compares the previous pic frame in that pixel's position with the new frame in that pixel's position 
and sees and sees how many how much of a difference it actually is. So we put a pretty high difference. I'll uh, we'll put 400. Um, it'll be a lot more. It'll be a lot less sensitive. Um, and then for detect shadows, we want to detect shadows, so we're just going to put that as true. And then we'll put the parameters, um, history, threshold, and then detect shadows. Um, so the next thing we want to do um, is create our while loop. So while true, we want to get the, ret the return value in the frame of capture dot read. So this is the frame of where capture is right now. Uh, let's do some notes. Uh, so the return value in in the current current frame. So this return value is very convenient because this can tell if there's an if there is is an actual current frame. If there's no current frame, we want, we don't want to go through our code because it will crash. Uh, so right here at the top, let's just check to see if return is true or not. And if it's not true, let's break out of the while loop. Ooh, not in JavaScript land. <laughs> and then we want to resize the frame because this uh, video is pretty big, um, so we'll refresh. Re give it a resized frame variable, um, cv2 resize. For the first parameter, we're going to pass in the frame. For the second parameter, we're going to pass in the size, and then then we want the um, basically the scale of what the x position is going to be, and then the y position. And now it'll make it easier to see when we open it in uh, OpenCV. All right, so the next thing we want to do is get the foreground mass. Uh, so we get the foreground mask equals FGP, FGBG. And then we're going to apply this background detector up here on the resize frame. And then down here, we're going to count all the non-zero pixels within the mask. So right here, this mask will give you a black and white. Um, it'll give you a black and white uh, frame. Uh, so basically, down here, whenever we have a white pixel, that's considered a true pixel. Um, so it won't be zero. Zero is false. Uh, so that'll be a black pixel, and um, so right here we're gonna do a count equals mp dot count underscore non zero uh, resized frame. So NumPy has a function built in um, count non zero. So basically, it just counts every pixel um, in the vector to see if this pixel is, has a color or not, and if it doesn't, then it's considered uh, zero and if it does then it's not zero. <laughs> oh I messed up up here. Um, so umpy, uh, import numpy as np. Messed up up there. Um, let's come back down here. Uh, so let's print out what we're gonna get. So we get frame um, well pixel count. We do want to keep track of our frame though. We should do that. Um, percent count. So let's actually keep track of what frame we're on. So we'll do frame, and then we'll do percent D, um, and then pixel count. And then we'll call, we'll create a variable named frame count up here. Um, frame count equals zero. Keeps track of what frame we're on. Um, and then down here, we're going to increment the frame. Frame count plus equals one. And now down here, we'll be able to print out which frame we're actually on. 
So here's where the logic comes in. So there's always going to be noise in our frame. There's always going to be some little spectacles or maybe even some big spectacles that we don't really want in the frame. So we want to keep track of how big this change actually is. And to do that, we'll, we'll, we want to see how big the change actually is inside the whole frame, the current frame that we're in. Um, so we already threshold in each pixel up here. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about detecting if it actually is a motion or not. We're detecting if the motion is big enough to be valid as a actual change. Uh, so this is where this will come in at. So we'll set an if statement. We'll have frame, frame count. Make sure, so first we're gonna make sure the frame count is greater than one because the first frame is always gonna be a really high number because um, that's basically a complete change from what it was. So it's gonna be a black image at first and then it's gonna detect it. It's gonna compare it with the first frame, which is a completely new frame. Uh, so it's always gonna be a high number. So let's make sure that frame count is more than one. Um, and then next, we're gonna make sure that the count of all of the change pixels inside the frame is more than, let's say, um, let's give it like an arbitrary number. I actually already did this before, so I have a number of um, I have a number of pixels that I actually want to look for. So we're gonna give it a frame count of five thousand. So now we're gonna show the frame. We're gonna show the resize frame right next to each other, um, and then we're gonna show the mask. Show the FG mask down here and then down here we want to detect which key we're pressing since this is a video we want to be we want to have a way to escape the video so this so by default cv2 .weight key is going to return a 32-bit integer value but we want to detect which key is actually being pressed so we want to detect it using ascii which is 8-bit uh, so we'll have an and zero xff, and this will basically show what key we're pressing. Actually, we won't print the key. Um, so if key equals equals twenty seven, which is escape, we're gonna want to break out of the break out of the um, the loop. So we want to I want to break out of the video yeah the video loop um, and in the in the whole loop. You know what? Let's actually show. Hmm. Let's show the frame. Let's always show the frame. Uh, so down first we're gonna always show the frame. So in this if statement we want to just detect if uh, if someone's still in our honey someone's stealing your honey right so down here we're just going to detect if someone's stealing your honey uh, and actually we won't we'll let it be kind of automatic so we'll do every 40 um, and then to finish the loop um, in the end we're going to just release our capture and then we're going to destroy our windows And we should be pretty good to go. Let's um, run this, check out what we got. All right, so let's make this frame a lot smaller. Let's make it 25, 25. Let's also raise this to like five milliseconds. Let's try that out. Oh, I am also a screen recording and voice recording on the same computers. So that could be a reason why it's going a little slower. So here we go. Um, so that's pretty small, small enough. All right, so the video is going through down here. Oh, we're gonna pixel count of everyone still not, honey. That's not good. So there's actually a bug right here. Uh, we have count. So right now we're counting all of the resize frame pixels, which is not what we well, not what we want. We want to count all the FG mass pixels. Uh, so let's open up the terminal. See what we got. 
Python main.py and let's we'll see what we got over here. So right now you see it's going through the frames, it's giving a pixel count of zero. So foreground mass is almost completely black at this point. Um, so that's exactly what we want. So let this keep going through. I don't know what this folder is. Now this image may be a little too small. Um, I guess next round we'll try to make it a little bigger. So we still have pixel count zero. This is taking a while. There it is. There he is. Someone's still eating honey. See it? Someone's still eating honey. And then it went away because the background changed. And you see the background history, it's it's actually the background model is changing. So now it thinks it sees that that went away, and now this is the new background. Um, and that's where the history comes into play. Alright, so we have it there. Uh, you know what would be cool? So we don't have to keep going back and forth between, between the frames. How about we put the text when someone's still in? Um, on the on the ma on the mask or on the regular resize frame. Um, so let's start with that uh, first resize this frame to make it a little bigger. Uh, and then when we have a frame count of greater than one and we have a count greater than five thousand, we're gonna come down here. Well, I'm gonna keep the print statement. Come down here and we're gonna cv2 that put text and then we're gonna put the text on whatever we want to put it on the on the image I want to put it on so we'll put it on the mask um, and then we're gonna have the text just copy and paste this so we're still in your honey um, and now we need the the X and Y position of the bottom left corner um, and then the font type, we'll use font underscore Hershey underscore simplex. Uh, the next parameter is the font size by scaling. So if we do one scale, that's going to be a one scale font size. Uh, the next one is a font color. It's using a tuple, tuple of BGR. Uh, so we'll make this color red, 255. And then the next parameter is the font weight, so the thickness of the font. And then the last parameter is just the line type we're going to use. Um, this is actually this line underscore AA. I don't think it's in um, OpenCV uh, 2, 2.x. So I think in OpenCV 2.x, you'll have to use CV underscore AA. So it will look like this. CV underscore AA, but in Python, open CV3, use line underscore AA, or whatever line type you're going to use. Uh, so that will put the text on the foreground mask uh, saying when someone's still in our honey. So let's check this out. So I actually made a mistake. Um, I put it on the foreground mask, but since the foreground mask has only been black and white, um, the color will come up as black if it's obviously a color. Um, so let's actually just put it on the resize frame. And then we'll run it. Oh, I also trimmed down the original video. I, feel, I realized that video is way too long. Um, I'm using too many resources on my computer. So it's taking a lot longer than how it was when I was testing beforehand. So there's actually one more bug. Um, I had this uh, origin at 10, 500, which is X of 10 and Y of 500, but I forgot that I lowered the um, scale a lot more than how it was. So let's put the text at the top. So it'll make the Y uh, 50, the Y position 50. And let's try running that. And there it is. Someone's still in your honey. You better get them. Get <laughs> there it is. Perfect. 
I think that kind of wraps up everything that we want to show. Um, if there's anything else you want to see or more information you want to learn about this, uh, let me know in the comments below and we can talk about it a little further. So there's one thing I forgot to show. Uh, so before we go, a security camera is never going to really have a video file. That's not a good example of a security camera. A uh, security camera will be a live streaming feed. So we're going to come back up there to cv2.video capture. Uh, this method takes in either a video file or a camera. Um, so we can pass in the camera. So I, my camera is the first camera that's built in the computer, which is zero. Um, we're going to come down here. We're going to make the history a lot smaller so we can actually detect um, when we when we can actually see it, have a real life example of how history works, how it builds a new background model after here every 50 frames. It will be, will be considered the new background after that. Uh, we'll put the threshold down. We'll put it down to like 200. Um, we'll come down here. We'll make the video size a bit bigger. Put it to 50. Because this is the camera versus the video. The video was a lot bigger resolution than the camera is going to be. Uh, and then we'll make the count a lot smaller to be considered a moving frame. We'll put it at 1,000 pixels. So if 1,000 pixels change in the video file, this will be considered stealing. Uh, so let's run this and check it out. All right, so I'm immediately stealing. All right, so right now I'm considered the background. See how almost the mask is almost completely black. Now if I move a little bit, now I'm stealing. So in about 50 frames, it changes again, and now I move again, and now I'm still in. Now I move again, move again, move again, move again, move again, and now I'm still in, now I'm still in, still moving again, moving again, moving again. So there's a good example of it. Stop that, and there we go. And that's pretty much it. Um, I am going to go have a demo later on, a little video demo showing uh, the four different algorithms so gmg uh mog mog2 of course so we just went over and then knn basically showing the difference between all four of the algorithms and um what's the difference and how it looks uh so be on the lookout for that there won't be any audio there's be four clips shown at the same time well five clips because of the original frames um so yeah be on the lookout for that and let me know if you have any questions or anything I missed or even a mistake I made. Um, let me know below um, what you all think. We can always go a lot deeper with background subtraction. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we'll be definitely be videos later on going more in depth with um, background subtraction and doing cooler things and better projects. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep on keeping on. Oh, and don't let me forget to tell you to hit that bell icon as well to stay up to date with all the computer vision, uh, machine learning, natural language processing, different videos coming up for AHA Cove. Woo! And join me on Discord, Twitter, uh, you know the usual things uh, to stay up to date and to talk about different computer vision, machine learning, natural language processing things. I'm also a JavaScript developer as well. I actually do that professionally. So if you have any questions about that, um, I'm there as well. Thank you, thank you, and thank you.